can this traditional Mesoamerican herb help with your gas troubles and even maybe prolong the uh, fridge life of your beans? Let's find out. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead and right now I am in front of my herb garden here and specifically in front of something called epizote. Now epizote uh, is a traditional herb that was used in Mexico and Guatemala and in other Mesoamerican food dishes and it was very popular specifically and is to, to this very day for things like black beans and refried beans. Now uh, it's interesting because it's also said in certain cultures to have a name that's kind of, uh, to say it politely, something like flatulence buster. Uh, that putting this herb that has been used for literally millennia in bean dishes can actually potentially help with flatulence or gas. And uh, it, it's actually been said that to cook black beans without this herb, epizote, would be unthinkable. Now, why would why would they say that or why would someone say that? Now we're going to look at a scientific study, very interesting information here specifically on this, on its ability to, present, to possibly preserve your beans even without refrigeration. I'm not suggesting you do this, but this is what the research showed. Now a test was conducted on the preservative effect of using epizote, about 12 fresh leaves with a half pound of dry black beans, then cooked. They cooked them uh, a half pound of dry black beans plain with no epizote. So you have these two different dishes, the exact same amount of black beans, half pound a piece, and one of them has the epizote leaves, specifically the leaves, remember not the seeds, the leaves in there, and the other one has just simply black beans. Now what they end up doing is quite fascinating. They end up uh, setting them out in the evening all night long in the open air. It's something like around maybe 60, 70 degrees outside and, and they're just leaving it in the, in the natural air. Well, the next day they took a whiff of it and uh, by the next day, the one that had no epizote in it began to have kind of an off, kind of a, a rancid or a rotten smell to it. The epizote, by the way, smelled perfectly fresh. And so then they tested it again later that night and uh, it began to smell more. You can imagine the, um, <clears throat> the one without the epizote in it, but the epizote still smelled fresh. The next day, 48 hours later, they went back and it was beginning to mold in the one that had, I mean, you would expect that, in temperatures during the day that were upwards around 90 degrees sitting outside, uh, what ended up happening was obviously you could actually begin to see the fungus beginning to grow on the one without the epizote, but the epizote one smelled totally fresh 48 hours later after just sitting around in, in the you know, hot weather and, and just the elements. So then what they did, they actually did the test multiple times. They then repeated the test with dried epizote leaves. And so what did they end up using for the dry epizote leaves? They used a half cup again, and just like they did in the other one, but they ended up using a tablespoon of the dried epizote leaves. I'm actually going to be drying some of mine for the winter because now if you live in some of the warmer regions of the earth, uh, this thing's going to be around all year long. Here, we, I'm way up in the north of the United States and so we have a short growing season, just a few months, and so I'm going to be drying some. But what did they find out? So what they found out was this, that they tried it again with the dried epizote leaves and once again one tablespoon to a half cup of dried. This is traditionally the way it was used according to the researchers. And what did they find? They found it's very similar result. They did a third study where they actually said, okay, well, let's actually analyze how much bacteria is in the beans, you know, maybe a day later and then rough nearly 48 hours. It was 42 hours later. And what did they find? Well, they found that 42 hours later, there was no bacteria in the epizote uh, mix when you had the epizote in the beans. The other one obviously was just filled with like, uh, I don't know, 100 plus million bacteria, something like that. And so what they found is this actually helped preserve the food. Now you can imagine why for millennia this was used, especially in times where 
you didn't have refrigeration. Refrigeration is a relatively new invention. Obviously, there's things like cold storage where you can have a hole in the ground and that's separate. You could have uh, a root cellar and these kind of things and we, we do have a root cellar, uh, but it's not going to do me any good for epizote. And so uh, what I will do is I will end up drying some of this and will it actually help with the gas? That's the great question. And I guess that's really for you to find out. But I would caution you on this. Just like any herb, like you don't eat basil like salad. You don't eat like a whole bowl full of basil or um, marjoram or, or uh, thyme. You don't, you don't stuff your face with herbs. Herbs are literally like a little garnish. They're a little addition to a meal. They're not the majority of something. And so too with this. Massive quantities of this are actually poisonous and you do not want to eat the seeds. The seeds are poisonous. Uh, they have been used for things like uh, worms. They've actually, they call it worm tea or worm seed. But be careful with something like that. I wouldn't suggest it. I mean, you could do something like that with your doctor, but I, I'm not suggesting any of that. But what it has been used for, like I said, for centuries, more so millennia, this has been used as a common ingredient. You may have had it. Maybe you've been down to Mexico or maybe you've been to a Mexican restaurant and there's, that, there's a certain taste in the food that you can't put your finger on. You think, this is different. By the way, uh, the name itself, epizote, uh, comes from the Aztec word that has to do with something like skunk smell or stinky skunk or something like that. And I, I can actually, just, just a moment ago when the wind was blowing this way, I could actually smell it. And to me, it has a um, turpentine-ish, other people say lemon. I think it would be wonderful if it smelled like a lemon. Uh, to me, it has kind of a funny smell, but many people actually, obviously down in, in this, you know, Mexico, Guatemala, these areas, people love it and it's, it's loved in the United States. Many times as you go out, you don't know, oh, what is that? There's just a little taste that's a little different that it never turns out this way in my house. And it might be the one missing ingredient for that, that Mexican style dish flavor that you've been missing. So something to consider. And uh, the great thing is you can even grow it in a cold environment, but once again, it's not gonna stay year round. And also it can reseed. Mine has actually gone to seed now. Once again, I won't eat the seeds, but I wanna save seeds. Probably it'll, it'll reseed itself, but I'm gonna do my best to gather up some of the seeds so that I can use them next year. If I move this, uh, you know, if I move this area, obviously I'll have to pluck up a bunch of starters potentially, but, or little uh, sprouts that come up. But regardless, I'm happy to have some. I'm happy it turned out well. And uh, consider this, if you really struggle with gas, you know, with beans, uh, two more thoughts on how to avoid gas. Thorough mastication. What I mean by that is chew, 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 chew. Uh, not, you know, three, four, five, six uh, chews and then swallow. But uh, we're talking, you know, 40 chews if you really struggle with it. And regularly doing that, you'll break it down generally enough and that your body will get used to it. And a second thing, actually, I'll give you two more, um, throw the next one in for three for free. But another thing you can do is not only chew it, but as you, as you, um, you have to eat it more often. If you hardly ever eat beans, you eat it once a month, you're, you're very likely to get gas because you won't have the enzymes or the good bacteria that's going to help break down what's in the fiber that's in the beans, this resistant starch. And so, but if you eat it regularly, you'll begin to get that good bacteria or the good enzymes that help break it down and you'll end up having less gas. Now, there's one more thing that I would consider doing if you struggle with gas uh, seriously, and that is, and I'm not telling you to do this without your doctor's um, suggestion or help, but, and especially don't do this if you're on, you're on medications or you have a disease or diabetes, but fasting for a 24 hour period with simply water can actually help reset the gut and actually help with immune function. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do probably a whole series on scientific studies on the benefits of fasting. Super excited about that. You don't wanna miss those, uh, but that's another thing to consider. So epizote is an option for potentially avoiding gas problems, chewing thoroughly, uh, fasting, and there was one other, right? Eating the beans regularly. Eating them regularly might take a while to, for your body to be able to assimilate them well, 
but try that out. It may help you with your gas issues. Hey, and by the way, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, more research, more learning more about uh, health and, and homestead, what it's like to live in the country and try to grow the things that you need for your health and for your wellness, uh, you know, like this video, subscribe, and uh, that'd help us out. That'd be a great blessing. Once again, have a great day.